Now, besides the many aspirants for political offices in Kenya's Tuesday elections, there are people outside of the political mainstream who are using their talents to advance the political, social and economic conversation, hoping that they can influence positive change. One such person is Gatumia Gatumia, the lead creator and producer of animated movies that focus on powerful political and social messages. Vincent McCory caught up with him in Nairobi to find out what inspired his latest movie, Kura, which addresses the issue of election corruption. Last year, which would be 2016, um, I, I needed to do a project to test some new animation processes. And when thinking through what story I could tell, I stumbled upon a, a much larger action thriller type of story with an element of um, uh, the electoral, electoral process, um, the themes of democracy, the themes of uh, corruption and how that plays into it were very, um, very prominent in my thinking at the time. So the story for Kura, which uh, is actually a Swahili word for vote, uh, came to, to being in late 2016. Uh, I had hoped that it would simply be a tool to challenge us to think deeply about the kind of leadership we need to elect and also the process. It was a kind of a, 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 an eerie kind of coincidence because I had just watched uh, your movie and then a few days later, coming, having come to Kenya, a person who was believed to be fighting any uh, form of uh, the corruption of the electoral systems, at least uh, you know, in the transmission of the election results, is found murdered. When you saw that, did you feel a little chill, like, wow? <laughs> because there's a kind of a similarity with the kind of story you're telling. It actually started a bit earlier, in fact. Um, our General Nkaiseri, who was one of our senior most generals, and so to speak, the person charged with keeping um, security through the electoral election season, died just a couple of weeks before the election. Um, a few days later, the person who was um, identified more or less as the lead in the information technology aspect of the elec electoral process was murdered, uh, Mr. Chris Msando. And this was very troubling because the film was, you know, on its own, already a sensitive topic and difficult to, uh, <laughs> it was an uncomfortable subject. For these things to have happened after the release of the film gave it a very eerie um, seriousness. Uh, so that I, in fact, at one point I began to wonder, was it a premonition that I had or was it just because this is what we do, this is what happens, that there are interests so deeply and so viciously vested in, in the process that um, if somebody is deemed to be an obstacle, they are removed. Kenya enjoys a fairly free media. And I think there's, there's a space for telling stories like yours. But given the sensitivity you know, around the issue of corruption, have you at some point maybe just feared a li felt a little concern about somebody looking at this and saying, who's this guy? There certainly is concern, and I have felt um, a, a bit of a shudder when, when I think about the film and uh, the events that have uh, transpired around about the time of its release. But I'm also very grateful, and I think that should be something that's pointed out, that Kenya has indeed grown in its um, the, the freedom of expression. There's much more space for there to be questions asked of the powers that be. Uh, and, and I'm grateful for that. And I, re I recognize and appreciate many people who um, paid the price for that freedom. Uh, but coming back to <laughs> my own safety, honestly, there have been those who've warned me and questioned whether it's wise to release such a film in such a heightened uh, uh, political fervor. The, the, the atmosphere is very charged. But I think I felt duty bound to to say what uh, I felt was impressed on my <laughs> artistic mind to say, and to just uh, pray to God that he would keep my family and I safe. 